Good afternoon, I am Pete, also known as Risk for Rewards. Currently got around 7,000 followers on Twitter. Um, got a few subscribers on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, if you click the link, uh, it just means that you get these videos first um, when I'm trying to get the prices out as quick as possible prior to writing the blog, which I tweet onto um, Twitter, obviously. Um, so uh, no results from day one because we haven't had any racing yet. Um, price is finally released for day two, so I picked out uh, four races to cover. So I'm just going to fire through those, keep it short as possible for everyone. So I know you're busy. Um, 4.45. Um, Phil's Do Dairies has got to be the best handicapped horse in training. Um, really, really hard hard luck for him in the fact that he ran into Sham Blue at Aintree, who was obviously the handicap block from Cheltenham and from last year, having been dropped three pounds as well. Um, they both pulled well clear of the third on that day, but it was you, you were running into a blot at the end of the day. And then the other horse that he's been beaten by is Party Central, who's obviously won again since and also bolted up at Aintree and is now like a 151 uh, rated horse. Um, so therefore he was he was literally running into brick walls. Um, and that on both occasions, he gave weight to both those, eight pounds to unexpected party uh, um, before, and then he gave three pounds to Sham Blue. So, and obviously they're both rated much higher now. Um, he is the highest rated in, in this event. Um, I do not understand why obviously Henderson could have saved this handicap mark for either a big summer pot or to save it for say a Cheltenham event um, or a winter event um, and go and plunder it. But for whatever reason, they're rolling the dice. So they're going in on the a graded race, um, level weights. He is still the highest rated in, in the race and his form figures do put him as the one to beat for me. Um, and he's been priced up at five to two, which I thought was more than fair. Um, I saw the estimated price was going to be five to two, um, but normally it opens at six to four and it leaves you in a big position. But no, five to two seems more than fair for me in a race which the rest of, yeah, there are some in there with a chance, but they're, they're not. And there's nothing special stand out. Henderson's record is four for twenty one in the last five years, um, so he has plenty of winners over here. And I can't imagine that he'd be sending it over for anything, but um, if he's expecting it to go close. So yeah, nice easy selection for me. Um, uh, the 520 um, is the return of the Albert Bartlett horses. Obviously you've got Manella Kakuna and Manella Kruna who met in the um, Dublin Racing Festival 2 mile 5. Um, on that day, everyone says that um, Manella Kakuna was unlucky and Manella Kruna got away with it on a front running uh, ride. Um, the Elliot horse has been off uh, since Dublin Race Festival with a niggle, but apparently is likely to go here and is very fit and ready to go in about seven to one. Uh, Manella Kruner looked at all, all but the winner of the Albert Bartlett, travelled so well the whole way round. Um, it was only when it got to the last furlongs, two furlongs, uh, they came round the bend and still hard on the bridle. Um, got to two out, uh, still fairly well on the bridle, and then he just got picked off by the nice guy. And the nice guy is my selection. He just looks so raw, so green. He just looked like a big gangly chaser. Um, he was. He came off the bridle a couple of times. Every time he was asked, he was just learning, and then back on the bridle again, learning. And he, his raw potential. He looked. He looked. He just. He just went away so easily from um, Manella Kakuna. And whilst it's a tight trappier track, and he might need to be get set going a bit a bit quicker. Um, it, it, I find it hard to see how they can reverse reverse the form there. And I'll be disappointed if the nice guy's not going very close. I also like him for the Brown Advisory, which he's currently 8-1. to one. So if you can get a prize for him to win uh, the race on um, Wednesday and also the Brown Advisory, which is 5-2 to two and 8-1. to one. So there might be bookmakers that can do that for you, combine those. I don't have a very many accounts that I can bet with anymore. So I don't get a lot of these things. I have to try and work out my own way of um, getting on. Um, but if you can ask William Hill, Skybet or whoever to get that, it's not a bad idea. I mean, it's better to be right twice than to be wrong twice. So if you, if you back him, if you say, oh, he's definitely going to win here, and then you don't back him to win the um, Brown Advisory, and yeah, and then straight after the race, they say, yeah, that's likely to be the target. He could be like four to one, and you've lost half the price. Whereas if you're fully expecting him to win here, then it makes sense to take a chance. If he loses, then it's not like you're losing again and again. You, you just lose the same stake that you would have had on him winning. So yeah, five to two, I like him. He'd be my probably my day two nap. Um, I also like Ramilies or, or Ramilies, thirty three to one shot um, outside of the field. He was running really well in the Albert Bartlett. Um, there is a possibility that he didn't stay because coming to one out, he was sat in third and plodding along and he travelled quite well in behind the nice guy. Um, but he, I don't know whether it's tiredness or he, possibly he doesn't stay. And if he doesn't stay, then he, he may get found out again. But he's 33 to one. So I'd rather roll the dice and keep him on side. 
Um, and then on to the Gold Cup. The Gold Cup is a bit of a headache of a race. Um, Nella Indo, straight away, I don't like. I, I'm not a massive fan of Robbie Power. I expected him to give a fairly poor ride like he did in the Gold Cup without being horrible to obviously as the individual. Um, uh, he, he'll be riding again, um, so same reasons. The horse also flopped big time on this event last year and that was having won the Gold Cup last year. Um, so I can't expect that he's going to get any better. Um, Alaho is the best horse in the race um, for me. Uh, he's quite a, quite a way better than all of these. Um, I just I still have concern about his trip. They did this last year. They wanted to try something different, so they tried to make him a champion chaser. He got beat by Chacon. This year he's trying to make him a Gold Cup horse. But the thing is, he hasn't got a two mile five um, Punchestown event, so he has to go to one or the other. So why not try here? Um, it, at the end of the day, he's a lot more settled now. And if he blasts off, they, these are good horses, but not like immense. You're not looking at like Denman and Quarto Stars. So if 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 he does get away with it and he gets a nice lead, um, which he will do, then um, he could well take the peg in. The, the angle for me with Alaho is the fact that um, if, he, if he does get beat and gets beat quite hard, then... Um, it's obviously it's very minute chance is that the bookmakers might automatically just drift him out for quite a few races which my automatic instinct will be is if he doesn't win this then it'll be the Ryanair again next year so if he does edge out a few points or even a point or two then straight away that'll be a selection for me if he wins then he could go down the Gold Cup route so just watch out for him there but he's not going to be the selection just because I don't know that he stays to the trip and obviously, it's always a hard race the way he runs at Cheltenham. So, it leads me back to last year's winner, um, Clanders Obo. Um, I doubted him at Aintree, he proved me wrong. Um, and then he comes here and he's aiming to do the exact same again. You know, he stays, he loves the track, he loves the trip. Um, Nichols is in form, loves finishing the season well. So, everything for that. My caveat with him is the fact that I have backed him this season. On the times that he won, I was against him. When he lost, I was with him. So, therefore, I'm following him with Galvin as well. I thought Galvin, even though he's very experienced, he just didn't seem to know what was going on with the Gold Cup. They all just huddled into a big mess, went for home too early, they all got in each other's way. There's like four of them jumping the second last together. And Rachel Blackmore just sat in behind on our blue tar, laughed at them all, went round the side and said, yep, yeah, cheers, easy. So, I just think they were all over the place there. This could be one race too many for him because he was out quite early. Um, but he's only had this run since uh, Christmas, so he's still quite lightly raced uh, in the last few months. Um, I think the single best piece of form over three miles in this race is his um, beating of Aplutard in the Savills chase. And this race has a serious potential to do the exact same, where they go for a burn-up with the likes of Alaho, Clanders Obo and others. And then horses like Manella Indo, they all start trying to take him on. And they, they could all end up burning into each other. And then he comes through the back like he did in the Savills and catches Aplutard. He does the same on this occasion. And I mean, he's seven to one. It's not, so he's a working man's price. So I'm happy to go with, um, and also the fact that Elliot, some of his horses underperformed at Cheltenham, um, so he might have a little bit more uh, up his sleeve. So yeah, Clanders Obo and Galvin for me, they're 9 2 and 7 to 1 currently. I'm happy with both those prices. Um, then final selection for today, um, I may have handicaps up on the blog on Twitter uh, later on, um, but I can't do it at the moment because there's no prices, so I can't give you a selection without a price. Um, is uh, the champion bumper? Got Fasal Vega, um, 8 to 13 currently. One on bottomless ground, um, which would slightly be a niggle because of the fact that the um, Q Vega would have loved that ground and, and the family read out big stairs. So the, the bottomless ground was always going to suit because it turns it into a, a bit of a slog and he just sluiced through it. But he did win on yielding at the Dublin Racing Festival, so it's not too much of a concern. They often have a time where you'll have something like Fasal Vega will come here and they'll have a, a Mullins 20 to 1 shot will overturn the rest. But the thing is, you you can only back what form you've got. And currently, you look at the form, and it's Fasal Vega and then American Bike. There's nothing to say he won't handle the ground, nothing to say he won't bounce back from Cheltenham. And, and the market leaders all ran in that same race at Cheltenham. So Fasal Vega, I think, could be quite a special horse. Again, another one that if you fancy getting him in like a double up with him to win here and him to win the Supreme, wouldn't put you off. Maybe the same, but a cover bet just for the Ballymore, because you'll never know what Mullins is going to do. Um, American Mike, I'd expect to go well, and if you can get without the favourite, I'd probably go him, and then maybe a double up with him to win the Ballymore, and him to win without Fasal Vega. So I think he'll go well as well. It would not surprise me to see big runs from Redemption Day or Seabank Bistro, because both of them were very well touted going into the race. Um, 
and I, I fully expect both of them to to be there or thereabouts. And like you say, end of end of season bumper, you, you never really know. But I, I expect Fasil Vega to be the the top of a few bets come March next year. So he'd be the one for me. Um, and American Mike obviously is to follow him home. So good luck wherever you're betting, and we'll be back soon.